Kerala, the evergreen Indian state blessed with serpentine stretches of backwaters, crystal clear lakes, brooks and rivers is a tourist's delight. A cruise along these pristine water bodies flanked by rows of majestic coconut palms and exotic rainforests continues to be a major attraction of tourists thronging the state every year. The backwater stretches of the state are also major waterways for commutation and transportation of goods. Water tourism still has a great potential in the state which is immensely blessed by mother nature however these alluring water bodies also turn into watery graves at times Even the recent years witnessed at least three major boat tragedies that claimed a number of precious lives. Alarmingly, these tragedies had its telltale impacts on the state's tourism, compelling the government to constitute inquiry commissions to recommend ways and means to avoid recurrence of such incidents. Whether these recommendations were followed up in its letter and spirit is still a great question mark. All the boat tragedies in the recent past expose the lack of safety measures in respects of the boats involved in the tragedies and severe operational lapses. It was in the year 2002, a commuter boat mishap in the Kumaragam backwaters in Alpura district claimed 29 lives. The tragedy was inevitable as the boat carried double the load of what it actually was capable of carrying. The victims were on their way to attend public service commission exam. Five years later, in 2007, the Tatekad boat tragedy. Fifteen school children and three teachers met with a watery grave when the boat in which they were cruising in the dam reservoir of the Periya River capsized. The latest and gravest tragedy was in 2009 when a sightseeing cruise boat sank in the famous lake at the Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary in Thakadi, claiming the lives of 44 tourists. The key word in all the three instances seems to be the appearance of the word avoidable. Some put the blame squarely on the Kerala Tourist Development Corporation, which operates the tourist boat services in Thakadi for employing untrained hands to operate the boats. The driver of the boat blames the passengers for crowding onto one side, but also says that the tragedy could have been avoided if the boat had been the more traditional wooden boat instead of the newfangled fiberglass one. Other witnesses claim that the ill-fated boat was listing to one side from the moment it left the jetty. The truth of the matter does not seem likely to come out that easily. Amid this dismal scenario, one thing is very clear. The state needs better and safer boats. One positive aftermath of the Thakadi boat tragedy was the introduction of a new set of rules titled Kerala Inland Vessel Rules 2010. It is against this backdrop that the State Water Transport Department engaged the state-owned Steel Industries Limited Kerala, Silk Kannur to build 100 new generation steel boats. Recently, the State Water Transport Department 
launched a new generation of steel boats with the capacity to carry 100 passengers at any given time and at any given place. These steel boats replaced the existing fiber boats that had a capacity to carry just 75 passengers. These boats were constructed by the public sector undertaking under the name of Steel Industries Kerala Limited which is currently based in Kannur at a cost of rupees 42 lakhs per boat. The Steel Industries Kerala Limited Arikal Unit, which commenced operations in 1984, entered the field of building small ships in 1992-93. It also has a track record of building a few steel boats for the State Water Transport Department some time ago. The steel boats now being built here are in accordance with the newly introduced inland vessel rules which insists upon engaging a naval architect to prepare the drawings for the boat construction. As such, Dr. S. K. Pyarilal, renowned naval architect, has been duly engaged for the project. Uh, in, in the history of maritime in Kerala, we had three major boat tragedies happened. The first one was the Kumaragam boat tragedy and uh, the reason for that boat tragedy was that uh, the planks, the wooden planks of the hull uh, were deteriorated and it gave way and water came inside. The boat sank and around 24 people were dead. So at that time, uh, Justice uh, Narayan Kurup Commission was formed and he gave some recommendation. His major recommendation was that the, a boat should not sink even if water goes inside. So for that matter, there should be, the hull should be divided into compartments. So such a situation was not existing in our boats in Kerala. Well, uh, after the commission's finding, uh, there was no much change, the situation was the same. Then happened the Tatekat boat tragedy. Now, Tatekat boat tragedy was actually, it was a very unscientific uh, way of construction. That means the, the owner of the boat did not have any idea about what he was going to make. He was trying a trimaran. Trimaran is a main hull on the middle and two small hulls on the side. This is a very sophisticated technology because if you are not doing it properly, it can be very dangerous. And that is what happened in uh, the Tekat boat tragedy. He just bought a big uh, fiberglass boat, fiberglass hull, and then bought two small fiberglass hulls and fitted together. There was a big platform. And how many people can go inside, there was no calculation. And then one day a crowd of around 24 students came there. All of them go, uh, went inside and on the um, half the way it lost the balance and tilted and all the people all the students died so again there was another commission so that commission was uh, justice paridulla commission now he gave the recommendation that the unscientific method of construction and supervision and certification was the major cause of this accident so he gave a suggestion that in the future Qualified naval architects or marine, marine engineers should come into the picture and they should be doing the certification. That was his recommendation. But after the tragedy also unfortunately nothing happened till the next tragedy happened that is the Thekadi boat tragedy. Now the Thekadi boat tragedy commission, um, Justice Moedin Kunyu commission, after the Thekadi a tragedy which happened in 2009 during the last almost two years now there has been a major change 
in our uh, maritime sector, in our inland water sector. The first thing after the tragedy was that the honorary court intervened and directed the government to take out all the commission reports, the old commission reports and frame new rules. So accordingly, the government uh, framed the new rules which is called the Kerala Inland Vessels Rules 2010. Now according to this rule, when you are uh, going to construct a boat, there must be proper drawings prepared by a naval architect. And these drawings and supporting calculations, that means the stability calculations, should be approved by a government appointed consultant naval architects. And the construction should be done according to that drawings. And when the construction is completed, proper test. One of the major tests is the inclining experiment test. Now this inclining experiment test should be conducted. And based on that inclining experiment, the consultant or the authorized people have to certify that that particular boat is, uh, is suitable for carrying how many passengers. So absolutely, I mean, ultimately, uh, our aim is to have a boat which is safe for the passengers. In typical Kerala circumstances, if you design a boat for 100 passengers, there are chances of overcrowding at peak times, he says. So, the design philosophy for the steel boats being built here is that even though it is for 100 people, at times it should have the capacity to safely carry more than that. Even though it was given for 100 people, how much space is there inside the boat? And according to the space, I calculated around 215 people can go inside the boat. So if such a big crowd comes, then also the boat should not sink, the boat should not capsize. This was my design philosophy. These new generation vessels are 20 meters long, 4.5 meters broad and 1.7 meters in depth. As these boats have been designed and built as five compartments, the boats can be safely brought back to shore even if one compartment is damaged. An expert panel has been appointed to supervise the construction of these boats at each stage to ensure that the quality and safety are in place. Detailed 15 drawings and major calculations including trim and stability calculations are done before starting the construction. Main points in the calculation are that even if 215 people travel in the boat and even if one compartment is flooded, the boat should not sink. Even if passengers move to one side also, as it is believed to have happened in the case of the Thakadi tragedy. These boats should not capsize. Referring to the minimum requirements in designing a boat, Dr. S. K. Pyarilal says that the first drawing is regarding the shape of the boat. Such a drawing is called lines plan. Lines plan is the most important drawing of the boat because all the calculations, all the characteristics and behavior of the boat is dependent on this plan. The second drawing is general arrangement plan relating to the shape of the boat, arrangement of seats, lower deck, upper deck, etc. This gives an overall idea about how the boat looks.
Next is construction drawings. Starting with that of the midship section. Midship section means you are cutting a ship through the middle. And we could see thickness of plates, profile, dimensions of things used inside the ship. Supporting this design is the other drawing called structural plan and profile. It will give whole details about the ship. Again, there is another supporting drawing called bulkhead drawings, which comprises of shell expansion drawing and propeller drawings. Then there is the trim and stability booklet, which will show whether the boat is stable and safe. This new generation steel boats holds the promise for better and safer water tourism in the state. This pioneering initiative of the State Water Transport Department is set to change the water transportation scenario in the state for good. Let us have safer boats and safer cruises and no more watery graves.